We've now reduced our points for current round method to just a few lines of code. But good news, there's a way to reduce the code by a few more characters, thanks to an amazingly handy feature of Swift called type inference. Let's take a look. All right, we're back in Bullseye and we're looking at points per current round. We've now got it down to three lines of code, but we can actually reduce the characters and these three lines of code a little bit. So it turns out Swift has this feature called type inference, where if you have a variable or a constant like rounded value and you set it equal to some value, well, think about it. Swift kind of knows that you have this constant and you want to set it equal to an int. So therefore, it must be true that rounded value for this to work has to be an int. And because Swift can conclude that, you can delete this bit. And since you're setting it to initial value, it, Swift knows that rounded value has got to be an int for this to work. So it's inferred that rounded value should be an int. That's what type inference is. And you can always check if Swift got it right by option clicking on rounded value. And you can see that it's inferred that the type rounded value should be an int. So we can repeat that since we're setting all of these to initial values by deleting the manual type specification they have here. And if you're wondering which is the best practice, it actually is considered a best practice in the Swift community not to specify the type because it makes your code more abbreviated and concise and easier to read. All right, so there's a couple other places we can do this as well inside our current project. So first is all of these state variables that we had up here, we set them all to initial values. So we set that to false, so it's gotta be a bool. We set this to 50.0. Now, because we put a 0 at the end, that's why it knows it's a double. If we didn't have the 0, it would make it an int. So that's why that's important. And then for here, int.random returns an int, therefore this must be an int. And again, you can option click and see that's a bool, that's a double, and that's an int. So Swift got it right. And then there's one more area that we created a constant. Yeah, here we go. So let rounded value int, well, we don't need that. And so that cleaned up a little bit. So that's a good start, but there's a few other characters we can save inside here as well. So another area Swift has with type inference is if you're using a property or method that belongs to the class, you don't need to put self dot. If you don't put self dot, effectively Swift will look at, it knows what's, what's available inside your class. So it knows that that's where it comes from. So basically we can remove self dot uh, all over here. There's a, there's a case we can't, but I'll show you in a second. Just to save time, I'm gonna just search for self dot and just delete self dot everywhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and build. Now we get one error here and it says, reference to property alert is visible enclosure requires explicit self dot to make capture semantics explicit insert self dot. So I'm just going to click fix. Now, the reason it's necessary here is way beyond the scope of this course. So for practical purposes, for as you're first getting learning, doing this favor, not using self dot, unless you get a warning or a problem like this for right now. And later on, as you advance through this learning path and you get deeper into Swift, you'll learn what this is all about. But anyway, thanks to the power of type inference, our method here is getting pretty small and soon we're gonna make it even a little bit smaller.